All right, Richard Mosley, Bayer, UK. Thank you, Richard, for being so spontaneously and joining in for the talk. No pleasure. Cool. How did COVID-19 hit you at Bayer? You personally, how did you experience it? Well, a whole uh, real series of emotions, really, and also um, new ways of working. I mean, for, for the likes of myself who's home-based, then it's not too much of an issue. We don't get out, we don't see our customers and our distributors as, as we were doing before, but they've also moved on to a home-based system as well. So the communication lines stay open. Uh, the, you know, we're having clear and uh, concise information passing from distributor back to, to ourselves at Bayer. And in the UK, we've got the Bayer Pest Solutions team, and that's designed to support not only distributors, but professional pest controllers, wherever they are, UK or further afield. And that's not necessarily just supported them with issues about Bayer. It's supporting them with any pest control support or guidance and advice that, that we possibly can. So I think like the rest of the world, it's a fast learning curve um, when it comes to COVID-19. Um, but of course, pest controllers are always at the center of this kind of thing because whatever is happening, and I, you know, I have experience of the foot and mouth disease over 20 years ago up in, in the north of England. Uh, whatever's happening, whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, from a pest control point of view, whatever the situation is around you, Pest, pest, pest activity and, and, and pests can, can make a, a difficult situation much, much worse, be that for people who are living in the homes, be that people who are uh, working on production lines, trying to keep food manufacturing going, be those hospital scenarios, school scenarios, all these essential services that are managing to keep up and, and, uh, and, and courageously working through the COVID-19 situation at the moment. Pest, pest activity can make every situation much more difficult, uh, much more testing, and you know can, can either shut down a production line, shut down a hospital, or shut down a, a school if you've got the, the wrong level of pest activity. So we're here to support, we're here to guide, uh, we're here to make sure that our products are available, uh, and you know we're, we're maintaining product supply, those kind of things, and, and, and we're keen to do so, and we're confident we will do. So we continue to work hard and support the pest industry whenever and wherever we can. And if people have those difficult questions and awkward conversations, we're here to have them. And, and we remain here to have them throughout, throughout the, the COVID situation and beyond. Mm. I know, you know, for me, um, having Bayer as such a multinational corporate in our industry is something I think we all can be very uh, thankful for. I know you guys are not only uh, responsible for bringing uh, so much products um, into the pest management world, but you also are a large information hub. And I know you're an actual partner for your distributors and, and, and the pest managers that are working with your products. So a big thank you for that, uh, definitely. And also my question would, of course, be distribution channels, uh, Richard. I mean... Is, is it an, an issue? Do you see that the distribution to the pest manager of them getting your products, is there some sort of blockage in somewhere in there? Are some distributors currently, did they stop working? Did some of your of the clients or the distributors stop working? Is there some lockdown, some effects that you feel um, where the regular distribution of your products uh, towards um, uh, their application at an end client, be it a farm or a supermarket or yeah. food side, is there some change in, in that situation? Um, to be honest, at this moment, no. I mean, in, in the UK, we, we work with two key distributors. They are managing to maintain supply. They, are, they both have sales teams that are busier than ever. They're mm -hmm. working from home, but they're maintaining really, really good contact and strong contact with the pest controller, you know, the pest control customers. They, you know, it, a lot of it's on the phone or by Skype or whatever. But, you know, they're probably speaking to more customers than, than previously because they've, they've got the time to do that and they've got that, the time to have those conversations. So both distributors that we work with, our key distributors, Baratine and Killjam, they're maintaining, you know, good product supply. Um, they're obviously facing pressures in other parts of the business regarding disinfectants and PPE, yes. as is the rest of the world, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, from a, a product supply, from a pest control point of view, then we, we've not really seen an issue, if I'm being perfectly honest. The one thing that Good. we are trying to do as, as Bayer with the support of our distributors is just 
to try and get some information out there to professional pest controllers about the benefits of using the right formulation or using the right product at this moment in time. Because one of the things that we have to accept is that professional pest controllers aren't necessarily getting the access that they wish to sites. And there's a number of reasons for that. That may be because the sites are shut. It may be because the, the, the sites, uh, domestic sites, houses, things like that, where you know, people don't want workmen, pest controllers accessing at the moment. And then we've also got some production sites, food production sites, are working harder and faster and, than ever to maintain product supply in the current situation. So there's a number of issues there. And w w from a Bay perspective, with, with the formulation technologies that we have, offering long palatability or long residuality, then for pest controllers who are really struggling to get access to sites, it may just give them a bit of an edge if they use the right product in the right location regarding long-term control because they don't necessarily know when they're going to get access back into those sites. So yeah. the right product in the right place mm. can provide a, a real service to professional pest controllers and really support them in the, in, in the delivery of the pest control services. Mm. Good point. Yeah, good point there. I mean, how do you deliver these information? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, some, uh, you know, especially in the UK where you are based and where is your key uh, responsibility for your market, as I learned, is uh, I always read about um, some sort of uh, resistancy, etc. So uh, basically rodents in large uh, areas of the UK being resistant to some uh, active ingredients, etc. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, this is exactly the point, you know, of education that you just addressed. Um, how do you yeah transform or not transform how do you transport that information about what formulation or active ingredient to use best for the various sites now during these uh, digital times remote or shutdown times do you offer e-learning did you change your course uh, towards communication with your partners uh, yeah i mean it's a really good point um b before the current situation we're in then we'd work with our distributors we'd work with the trade bodies in the uk and we'd attend the various events and and, and stand there and, and, and educate and speak at them now you can't do that now but by maintaining good contact with the likes of the trade bodies bpca mpta as well as the distributors they're, they're all striving to run online events webinars group you know group conferences those kind of things so the one thing that we do and we've always done is we make ourselves as available as we possibly can to, to, to take an active role in those um, and support whether it's a distributor, whether it's a trade body, support them as well as we possibly can and, and, and be there to, to pass on the information and, and, and so use those recognised and respected organisations within the pest industry to, to help get the message across. And then we're also in the process of developing our own um, webinars and whatnot where we can yeah. start to update and, mm -hmm. and, and and give people the the right level of information and, and as I say we're also very good at getting our information out there generally we've got you know strong websites we yeah. you know we Twitter we you know we we use as many different formats as we possibly can to get our message out there to get the information out there mm -hmm. and, and and importantly get the information back as well because obviously the more the more information that you get back from the market the where whether it's whatever particular pests that have been a problem at this moment right now, mm -hmm. then the better you can tailor your, the information that you're passing through, but also um, the product supply as well. You know, you can start to have an educated understanding and an educated guess about what you really need to be making available for the marketplace in the next weeks, months, uh, and going forward, potentially the rest of the year. So, you know, it's not just a one-way street. It's not just uh, Bayer throwing information out there. We really want the information coming back as well because I've been in pest control a long time, but I still learn something new every day. So it's only <laughs> by getting the information back from the professional pest controllers that we educate ourselves and, uh, and, and then, we, you know, we, we learn a piece of information and then we can, you know, we disseminate that through to the, the rest of the industry with the work that we do. As I say, it might be on our own terms, it might be with the support of a distributor, or it might well be with to support one of the trade bodies in the UK. It doesn't really matter as long as we're out there and people know we're available. Couldn't agree more, Richard. I mean, communication is key and how you communicate. I mean, there are various different channels. Some people like Facebook groups for pesties. Some people read Pest Magazine. I've seen your great yeah. article in Pest Magazine, our partners. So, um, yeah, I, I think just spreading the word out there from a helping hand from, from you as a, as a manufacturer of, of products that are widely used in the industry is something that the industry needs. And uh, I think what I'm always asking my interview partners is, do you think the perception of pest management um, is going to change? 
because of COVID. I mean, um, talking about key industry, I mean, all around Europe, as we know, pest managers are now assigned key workers, key industry. Um, you know, everybody that are always comparing it to some, I don't know, consumables like a clothing shop or something that has yeah. been very hip place to work also for younger people um, nowadays probably shut down or facing issues near towards bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Do you think pest management uh, as a vital part of our society and ecosystem for human health is changing the perception of pest management for, you know, young people out there looking for a job and um, uh, maybe facing unemployment? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a good point. I'd like to think so. Um, for many years, you know, before I worked with Bayer, I worked with, with the, for one of the trade bodies in the UK and, and actually elevating the status of the professional pest controller is something that we always strive to do. Um, I think in situations like this, if we're not careful, the impact and the importance of pest managers is lost in, 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 in the general, and in some cases, understandably. Um, and it's really the role of whether it's Bayer, whether it's the trade bodies, to really keep the message going, which is one of the reasons that I, I did write the article that, that, that you mentioned, is just to highlight the importance of professional pest controllers. Mm -hmm. The problem is they're only really important when you really, really need them. And, and, you know, and, and, and that is part of the problem, but people need us far more than they expect and far more than they know. And we're involved in far more of the preventative aspect of the industry than people will ever know. But because you don't see that, you don't, you don't realize how important the, the, the pest control industry really is. Yeah. So if, if something positive is to come out of COVID, I would like to think that it does elevate the status of our industry. Um, and I think, if I'm being perfectly honest, the industry probably has to look at itself and 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 be and, and be keen and, and confident in elevating its own status. You know, we need to you know we need to be strong in the way that we describe ourselves, the way that we describe our services. You know, we are very well trained. We are we've got good levels of uh, uh, of understanding, and also we're using more and more technology. Those kind of things. So. We're just not simply the person who's putting something down to kill something anymore. Exactly. Yeah. We are a, 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 a technical, well-educated, um, mm -hmm. well, well uh, positioned, and, and hard-working part of the industry uh, 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 that that keeps the rest of the industries, whether it's food, whether it's hospitality, or whether it's okay. nursing. We, we, we've got an influential part in all of those industries. So it would be nice if, 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 if our status was elevated at the end of this. I think it should be. Um, I think that depends on us, really, and, and, and as, as an industry, how we come together and how we work together to, to maintain our status in, in the current situation, if I'm being perfectly honest. Mm. Um, before I ask my final question, um, which would be uh, what new products uh, are, uh, is Bayer up to? Because everybody's looking at your new uh, product launches, etc. And I'm curious as well, um, mm. uh, as always. But uh, yeah. looking at you know growth in the pest management industry, uh, to reference to your earlier uh, point on the perception of pest management, uh, mm. pest the bigger pest control companies uh, grew a lot through mergers and acquisitions, so inorganic mm. growth, basically. Now they stopped uh, uh, for press release, stopped their mergers and acquisitions. Um, basically, what's up now is, uh, what's, what's on the schedule right now is incremental growth, so organic growth, growth uh, by working incremental with the clients who have or getting some yeah. new clients for new sales activities. Um, I think, well, per the perception of pest management, also in, in reference to how we deal with our clients, um, in the past 10, 20 years, I think, we had a downward spiral when it comes to, to price development of the service technician. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really hoping that um, this development of perception of, of pest managers, not maybe not of the general public, but mm -hmm. of our clients, let's say farmers, hospitals, uh, bars, pubs, supermarkets, food sites, farmer sites, yeah. I hope that perception is getting now as we're assigned key workers and some of them printed certificates. You please still visit our sites. We need yep. you. Um, hopefully that is going to change that downward trend towards yep. maybe elevating that also margin uh, game that pest management companies are working on because in mm -hmm. the end, you need to get paid and uh, with inflation and uh, maybe even more inflation driving down uh, margins. Yep. Uh, I, I'm hoping that our sector is really getting what it deserves. Uh, mm. Yes, maybe your point, a uh, quick reaction to that. Yeah, I mean, certainly from a Bay perspective, we 
you know, we, we reach out to the food industry and, and those kind of organisations and we've done some good research in, in the past with the likes of the British Retail Consortium where we've looked at, you know, what does the food industry need from the pest controllers and vice versa. So this is a, uh, some, some work that we did over the past couple of years. And the, if you categorise and look at the views of the two different sets, whether it's the professional pest controller and the, and the people who are managing these, these food manufacturing sites, pest controllers presume that the most important thing regarding these food manufacturing sites is may be the price. But that's not what the food manufacturers tell us in, with the data that we've received. And this was, this, this was UK and US data. And, you know, they don't necessarily like the price moving a great deal, but what they really, what they really are um, interested in is, is level of service, service delivery. So they don't, they never put price as the most important thing. And, you know, things like that, again, it comes down to the pest control industry really understanding what, what the end user customer needs. And I think the, the, those are the kind of situations where we can help by by bridge the gap between the two and, and be something that's slightly independent in the middle if we're being perfectly honest mm. so you know I, I think as the pest industry we need to be strong and accept that you know price is important but it's not the main driver and certainly as we come out of the current situation that we're in with, with covid then you know whether it's things like remote technology or those kind of things that that might have been a nice to have before the situation we're in now, but as we come out of COVID, be it in three, six months or whatever, then that ability to manage sites remotely could become more and more important as we learn a lesson from where we are right now. And again, you know, we've got this limited access, you know, whether it's through production or through it's through limited means because sites are shut. Then though in those kind of situations, then, you know, we see that, that potentially some of these digital developments may become more important. And I think ultimately they elevate the status of the professional pest controller because they, it, it's almost a, another skill. They're not simply the person who's coming down baiting and putting rodenticide or insecticide down anymore, but they are uh, educated, technically um, uh, competent person who's, who's using a lot of digital technology, wireless technology, you know, digital report management, all these kind of things that actually they start to build the reputation of the professional pest controller and make them a far more useful tool in the eyes of the end user customer, the, be it the food site, be it the hospital, because they're, they're providing far more than just a basic service. It's the level of digital information and those kind of things and the level of reports. Um, trend analysis, those kind of things that are being generated and, and managed by the professional pest control. So, I think uh, one of the one of the outcomes of the situation we're in at the moment is that those kind of digital technologies, be it rodent monitoring or whatever, they'll become of more interest. They'll become of more importance, and because of that, then that that will ultimately and inevitably elevate the status of the pest controller in the eyes of the of, of their customers and the end users who who probably learning something from this process themselves where the, you know, the, the more, the more support, the more access, the more detailed information that they receive from the pest controller, the stronger their position is in these kind of situations where you don't say, you, you know, no one saw this coming, but you know, we could now start to future proof pest control by putting some, you know, additional controls in place that mean if, if God forbid we ever have another situation like this again, then we've got a, a, a very interested and in, in, in com comprehensive level of control management in, on site. And, you know, we've got far more access to, to digital knowledge about the site and, and digital access to, you know, plans and, and systems and, 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 and road management control. Yeah, very strong point, Richard. I, I think it was really important, uh, important for all, uh, also for our viewers and interesting to hear your point of view on that. And I think it's it's also will play a vital role. And I think it, it takes us, you know, what we're getting in the end is more data. And, uh, you know, as we are evolving ourselves, as you, said, as you said, we're probably taking that data and making some good stuff out of it, you know, trend analysis. Yeah. 
and, and reports and forecasts and whatnot, yeah. you name it. And also the level of support uh, for a site is getting from, let's say, two, three minutes per box to 24 hours per day, which could yeah. elevate, of course, the service quality of what we do and the perception of what we do, uh, for sure. Yeah, very strong point. And of course, what, what we l would like to know also would be what, what is Bayer's strategy? I would, my last point, as I said, was... Uh, I would love to to um, ask about maybe new product development, any new strategies of, of you uh, in, in um, yeah, when it comes to products and new product launches. Mm -hmm. Maybe people are always looking at you guys uh, for, for some yeah. new innovations. Uh, but maybe as you talk so much about digital, and I know Bayer did something digital with digital uh, remote control in, in the US. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe you can tease us with a little bit about that and uh, give us a little bit of a hint of what might come of Bayer within the next couple of years. Yeah, well, I think, you know, certainly if you look at uh, our colleagues in the US and they're doing an awful lot with, with digital, it's, it, it's up, it's running, it's a system that people can go and have a look at and purchase. Uh, and, and certainly that's something that we're learning from, from a UK, European, European perspective. And we're certainly looking to where we can incorporate those technologies into, into the way that we deliver our, our pest control services from a chemical and also a, a digital point of view. So there's a lot of learnings to take from our colleagues in the US, but it's certainly something that, you know, as from a Bayer perspective, as, you know, we get more controls over uh, pesticides, insecticides, registrations become more difficult, then it, it's a sensible area for, for the likes of Bayer to be, to be looking into. And we, we've, we've got the benefit of uh, the support of our team in the US where the system's up and running. So, yeah, it's certainly something that, you know, we're very keen to, to look into and find out a little bit more about um, and, and, you know, take that forward where we can from a UK, European perspective, potentially. But at this moment in time, we take our learnings from our colleagues in the US where the, it's available and, you know, it's free for people to go and take a look at. And but, you know, hopefully it's something that, you know, we'd like to work with going forward. Um, um, but that's not to take away from the chemical aspect of our business, which is still incredibly important. And um, it's, it's there to support pest controllers from a chemical point of view. We've very recently launched two new products, an insecticide and a, and a cockroach gel. And one of the things that we have been talking about uh, comprehensively is how those two formulations, which is chaofrin particles, and Maxwell's platting can be incredibly useful at this moment in time for professional pest controllers. Yeah. The insecticide part six is, you know, 12 weeks residuality on all surfaces because of the technology within the formulation. And the cockroach bait can be palatable for up to 12 months after application. Mm -hmm. So if we think about the context where you might not know when you can next access the treatments that you're carrying out because you know, of, of the various problems that we have at this moment in time, then an insecticide with 12 litres residuality and a cockroach bait with up to 12 months uh, palatability quite useful products at this moment in time if you're struggling to get access into these various locations because you just don't know what the situation will be from day to day week to week from lockdown you know what sites are open what aren't so the, you know the chemical side of the business can can really offer the professional pest controllers some support right now just because and, and both of these are you know brand new formulations, brand new technology within the formulations, and they've come at just the right time to offer support for pest controllers in, in the current scenarios. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've, um, my, my parents also worked in pest control. I still know the days where we've been fogging against uh, cockroaches. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, just got to say, I'm uh, super thankful for Bayer to have them put uh, these innovations out in the market. I mean, cockroach gels being super efficient, which uh, the facts that you just added, I mean, uh, um, it's a no-brainer that these products are highly efficient. And I think it's, uh, for the industry, it's, you know, we just can be thankful to have these. So I think... Yeah. Um, when we're talking about digital and you know sustainability and all of that, I think uh, uh, also for a company like you, where the main focus is still going to remain chemistry, uh, we really got to highlight that uh, we're always talking about a toolbox uh, and a set of products that can be, you know, as an addition uh, um, uh, to yeah. the existing product range that you already have. So um, when I talk to Bayer um, uh, staff and your peers uh, from France or wherever and, and Germany, um, it's it's funny how the mentality really changed because all of you are 
incredibly um, uh, put, putting so much um, uh, a focus also on sustainability of things because obviously mm. uh, in the new world where green and other buzzwords are, uh, you know, are not buzzwords anymore, but with climate yeah. change, actual problems and challenges uh, that we're facing also in our little industry of past management. So for me personally, that grew up with Bayer as a chemistry company now looking at what you also have to offer in the US with digital innovations and thinking about sustainability and, and more green um, mm. biocides, insecticide, pesticides yeah. uh, to bring into the market. It's uh, of course, it's, it's, it's quite funny to see that uh, but, and so eye-opening, but at the same time, so logical. So I think uh, there's a lot of pride yeah. also when I speak to your, pe uh, to your peers from other countries, a lot of pride in your eyes when you guys are, are talking about all these, these things because I think you, you can be proud about not just you know, being so flexible as such a large corporate business uh, mm -hmm. from, from uh, you know, reassessing what you've been doing for the past yeah, aids uh, and looking towards the future. I think uh, you could really be acting as a role model there for our industry with uh, the reassessment that you're doing for your business. Yeah, we certainly hope so. I mean, I think one of the things to remember going forward, and I think something that we'll all have to learn is, you know, whether it's technology or chemistry, it's not either or. Um, the two really do need to complement each other, and whether it's the you know, the targeted delivery of, of the rodenticide or the targeted delivery of the insecticide, the better, you know, the, the better development of the spray technology. It doesn't, you know, whatever it is, um, the two will will complement each other going forward. Mm -hmm. And the, the way that I feel about it is that the, the more we can put technology into the way that we actually use or apply pesticides or digital management or whatever, then not only does one support each other, but also one helps to encourage the life of, of the other. So, you know, the more targeted application of insecticides, pesticides, rodenticides is always going to be of more and more importance in, as, as we go further and further into the future. So, if, if, you know, if, if we can start to future-proof our chemistry with the use of technology, then that becomes of vital importance, not just for Bayer, but for all the people who um, and professional pest controllers who constantly rely on our products to to del deliver the, so the solutions that they do. We want to make sure that they deliver those solutions in 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, 100 years. And technology will have to make a part in that. You know, technology, the use of more technology will help it, will protect the chemistry. Um, and, you know, because we can be more targeted with it and that means we're more efficient with it. You know, we've got a better environmental profile with the formulations, that kind of thing. And it means going forward, we, we, you know, the service delivery is, is, is strong, in, in whichever aspect of the business that we're concentrating on. Mm -hmm. And I've um, also, um, I, I, by the way, I really loved uh, um, uh, the term uh, future-proof pest management. I think that's definitely going to become the title of this video interview. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I really like what you just stated, which, which basically also when I'm, when, when I'm talking to your peers, um, we we'll always talk about the IPM pyramid. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, um, um, you know, the bottom stands for integrated pest management, you know, proofing, hygiene. Yeah. We have mechanical control, physical control, um, yeah. you know, um, uh, maybe uh, uh, some low potency uh, uh, chemicals, and then, then we have the toxins and the rodenticides, uh, pesticides, insecticides, so basically all sorts of biocides at the very top of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah um, we've always, at our CEPA work and, and, and the associations, we've seen that with the resi resistances and the residue of these products sometimes in the environment, that sometimes the pyramid was rather, uh, you know, not really a pyramid anymore, but maybe standing yeah. sometimes for some companies, always acting, of course, responsibly for their company. So it's, you know, it's, it's not uh, uh, nobody to blame, really, um, because every scenario is different. But I think, um, as you just stated, I think all of these tools be the digital reporting system that delivers more data, a digital device that helps us to control its site 24 seven and reports data again back to the service provider, helps people and your clients and partners to use these uh, biocides um, that, that can be so powerful in pest management more mm. responsibly and more effectively, right? With yep. a lower impact to the, to the environment uh, probably. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think what you also have to take into account is there are always regulatory pressures. Yeah. You know, from a registration point of view, be it biocides or whichever process that you're going through. So if you can show within that re uh, regulatory framework that you actually are considering the, you know, the, the delivery of the product and, you know, you're, you're, you're being far more careful, you know, you, 
the way that you're you're managing the product. It's not just the registration of the product. It's it's the understanding of the way that it's going to be you know, be delivered in a more concise and a more you know precise way. Then that, you know that has got to help through the the registration process as well. So it's it, it's it's taking. Um, you know, it, it's taking responsibility, I think, uh, around the product for the way it will be managed, the way it will be delivered, and you know, ultimately working working with partners to really give the professional pest controllers the best tool to deliver the best products. Uh, and whether that's application manufacturers, application equipment manufacturers, you know, specialist access equipment, those kind of things for you know, particularly difficult. You know, Asian hornet situations are, you know, all these kind of things. It, it, yeah. It's working with the, you know, working with these organizations that, that, that understand the delivery of the product and we understand the, the, the ability of the product. So when you put the two together, then you've got quite a, you've got quite a strong bond there and you've got quite a, a strong method of, of application that's, that, that, that's planned and and has gone through a, a, a process and it's gone through a, a learning process. So, yeah, it, and so, you know, working with partners is important because they have certain capabilities and technologies and understandings that you may not. And, you know, you know we did, we're developing the best products. So, you know, by working with the two, then you, you really do give ultimately the professional pest control the best chance of success and that's what it's all about really mm -hmm. you know um, doing it in the most safe and efficient way um, um, and the most regulated way but still giving them the best opportunity to control the target species with the minimal amount of product in, 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 the, in the fastest possible time frame yeah Super. Um, Richard, I got to say, uh, so much. Uh, uh, thank you so much for the talk. Really interesting. Uh, and I really want to revisit our discussion in the next couple of months, uh, if, okay. if I may, uh, because I think no it's problem. extremely uh, important for all of our, our viewers out there to see um, what is happening with Bio. You're really in a revolution right now. So many new products, mm. so many new thoughts, and also in sustainability. I think uh, um, revisiting our pest uh, industry in the next couple of months, also during maybe still COVID times, will be extremely yeah. Interesting. So thank you so much. No, very, very happy to do so. Thank you very much.